Welcome to your Bobby List Today midweek news update for Wednesday, September 4. So glad you can join us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Prime Minister Mia Motley is all set to get a first hand look at the devastation in the northern Bahamas. She will travel early tomorrow to join her Caribbean counterparts, who will meet with Bohemian Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Menis. Motley made the disclosure this morning as she appealed to Barbadians to give generously to relief efforts for the battered Caribbean country. Early tomorrow morning or late tonight, I will go for the day with Prime Minister Chastene. I'm on the board, Bureau of CARICOM. I will accompany Prime Minister Chastene, the Secretary General of CARICOM, and the President of the Caribbean Development Bank, the Executive Director of SEDEMA, as we go into Nassau for early tomorrow morning to be able to meet with Prime Minister Minis. My heart bleeds for the people of Bahamas. And I can only say that for us, it is even more poignant because this system threatened to destabilize our own people and our own country. <coughs> and if there is any just Christian or charitable bone in us, then we each know what we have to do, however small, however large. Motley also announced that government will be spearheading a national telethon that will provide Barbadians with the opportunity to give generously. She also called on the religious community to get involved declaring that Sunday is a day of restitution, recovery, and renewal. I've also asked the ambassador to CARICOM, David Comijong, the National Cultural Foundation and the Ministry of Public Affairs and Information and Broadcasting <coughs> to start the preparations this morning for a national telethon on Sunday that will focus the minds of Barbadians who want to give and who want to donate to that account. I'm hoping that all of the media will come on board. But more importantly, I hope to meet with the Barbados Christian Council and Barbados Evangelical Council to be able to humbly suggest to them that it may be useful for them to come up with their own program for Sunday as well. Because this third Sunday must not be about Dorian's destruction. This third Sunday must be about restitution, recovery, and renewal. Four schools won't be opening their doors when the new school term begins next Monday. Following a tour of several school plants this morning, Education Minister Santia Braja told reporters Work at 38 out of 41 schools has been completed on schedule. The remainder will be closed for an additional week. The three schools that we are likely not to be able to open on Monday, but we, they will be closed for a week, will be St. Stephen's Nursery. We also have St. Giles Primary and also Belmont Primary. There's some additional work that needs to be completed at those schools. And given that in the past we've had situations where we complete the works and or we rush on the weekend to get it completed, and we have situations where the industrial cleaning hasn't taken place, I think it is more prudent for us to close the school. And I'm giving the notice from now because I want parents to be aware of it, I want the public to be aware of it, teachers to be also aware of what we are, we are the challenges that we are having, and to be able to plan accordingly. So those the three schools that we're not going to be able to open on time. Later this evening, authorities revealed that a fourth school, the St. John, John Primary School, will also open a week later. Minister Bradshaw also said she is keeping a close eye on developments at St. Bartholomew and Milton Lynch Primary. Despite the hiccups, Bradshaw said she was, however, pleased with the work being carried out by the contractors. 
we've had a couple of kinks here and there, but it's nothing that we has thrown us completely off track. I think 38 out of 41 schools, um, particularly being quite ambitious to start off with, is pretty good. Um, are there concerns that still are outstanding? Yes, there are going to be concerns because this is 10 years that there has not been a substantial amount of money placed within the budget for renovations and repairs to the, um, the school plans. So we're not going to be able to fix in one year what has not been done in 10. But I am confident that we have assured the, the union certainly that we are working with them to be able to certainly keep them up to date and to allow them to keep up to date the, their base so that everyone understands that we are actually making the best efforts to, to render you know, the situation in a timely manner. In other news this Wednesday, the Senate today approved the Evidence and Miscellaneous Provision Bill. The bill seeks to increase the categories of people before whom an affidavit may be served or confirmed. Innovation Minister Senator K. McCorney told the upper chamber the move will help to improve the efficiency of the legal service. And this effort serve to increase the categories of persons before whom an affidavit can be sworn. It is not done in isolation, sir. The Office of the Attorney General has been taking various steps to improve the administration of justice and the efficiency of our court systems. And these include, among other things, adding new courts, providing for additional judges, adjustments to the penal system. The legislation related to all, to all of these have, in their various forms, passed through this honorable house. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. To regional happenings in the Bahamas, the death toll from Hurricane Dorian has risen to 20. Word of this from Minister of Health, Dr. Dwayne Sands. He said 17 of the victims were from Abaco and the remaining three from Grand Bahama. He cautioned that the figure is likely to rise as search and rescue exercises continue. And further afield, Boris Johnson has faced a double defeat in the Commons after MPs turned down his motion for a general election. Earlier, MPs backed a bill aimed at blocking a no-deal Brexit if the PM hadn't agreed to a plan with the EU ahead of the October 31 deadline. The eyes to the right, 298. The nose to the left, 56. One. <laughs> The eyes to the right, 298. The nose to the left, 56. So the eyes have it, but the House will be aware that the motion has not obtained the majority required under the Fixed Term Parliaments Act 2011. Unlock. Yes. Oh, very good. Well done. Yes, yes indeed. Point of order, the Prime Minister. We're great. Thank you very much for your kindness. Uh, I, I, I note that the Leader of the Opposition is once again not in his place in what I think is a slightly symbolic way. Uh, Mr Speaker, 48 hours ago, 48 hours ago, he was leading the chance of stop the coup, let the people vote. Now he's saying stop the election and stop the people from voting. Uh, <laughs> I think, there's, 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 I think there's only one solution. Uh, I think he has become the first, to my knowledge, the first leader of the opposition in the democratic history of our country to refuse the invitation to an election. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates or like us on Facebook and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. 
There are also Naizumi Media and Bus Terminals as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening.